Okay, we're back on the That's Good Sports podcast. Brandon Perna here with Will Keys. What do we, we missed the last two weeks? Is that right? Yeah, well, we didn't do two weeks ago for whatever reason. And then um, I didn't have Wi Fi last Thursday. So, oh, yeah. Which that, you know, that was a whole saga. Um, and, yeah, you had an the moral of the story. dumb cable yeah. guy come over, huh? Correct. Yeah, well, dumb cable guy, dumb roommate. He's not here. Uh, but the point is, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. And also pay AT and T to come uh, when they say that they're going to come. They don't. Right. Generally speaking, they don't. Will had a cable guy come over and not know where to hook up his internet cable. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's just what I heard because I entrusted my roommate to, to let the guy in and show him uh, where the cable was. And, uh, you know, word got to me that they couldn't find it. And so I came home after the guy left, of course, and I found it within 30 seconds of looking. So, oh, that's so stupid. Yeah. That was the, um, the first thing I texted you was the cable guy – is either lazy or an idiot. So either he just didn't want to do it and realize your roommate wasn't going to uh, challenge him on his authority, or he really didn't know where to look for the, the, you know, Wi-Fi cable hookup. So we'll never know. I I hold hold my cable guy to a higher standard like Jim Carrey. I want an obsessive compulsive guy that is going to know exactly what to do. Maybe he'll infiltrate my life and my social circle in the process, but I'm getting great cable and internet service. Uh, yeah. In, in terms of where, where I rank the relationships of importance, it is my doctor, my accountant, then my cable guy. Yeah. And in no particular order. No, that was the order. <laughs> <laughs> from from three to one yes uh so today uh we have a little bit of football news to break we only break news here the hall of fame game has been canceled between the steelers uh, and cowboys the hall of fame ceremony has been postponed uh training camp supposed to start july 28th even though those things aren't happening after july 28th um so we'll talk about the the NFL, what might happen with the season, because we know NBA, baseball, hockey, all coming back, and UFC Fight Island definitely happening. Um, oh, that'll happen. Yeah. So we'll let's let's start with UFC Fight Island. Uh, okay. It's it's happening on Yas Yas Island. In Abu Dhabi, yeah, there there are no rules there, so that's that's why they they chose that that area. Um, but fights are supposed to happen July 11th, 15th, 18th, and 25th. Uh, all of the fighters must pass four rounds of testing before the fight, and then a round of testing post fight. So it seems like they have their shit together. Um, UFC, obviously, well, I mean, we saw NASCAR happen, but UFC seems like the most manageable uh, sport to do. Your individual guys, uh, you can test them because you're not having to test, you know, a thousand guys every week or or whatever. So that'll be interesting. Uh, I'm not a huge UFC guy, but maybe I'll try to watch one of those. but I think, like, is this pay per view? Probably. I would assume so. They don't. They don't I give mean, that shit away for free. If it was, they get great ratings. Uh, um, yeah, and I mean, could you make more money selling? A lot of buyers. Yeah, could you sell more advertising dollars than pay per view pay per view buyers? It's a question for John Ham. Yes, John Ham in the role of Dana <laughs> White. In the room. that now that is a UFC that I would like to see, or Dana um, Carvey we'll in the role this. of Dana White. <laughs> Dana White Carvey. 
this is maybe the worst character you've ever come up with. Um, I don't know. If, I don't think I'm going to watch this. If it's pay-per-view, I definitely won't watch it. Um, if it's on TV, then I probably won't watch it either because I don't want to have to pay a cable guy to come out here again and yeah. just probably, um, you know, accidentally destroy my apartment in the process. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of tip my hat to them for finding – uh, a tremendous loophole to get this done and the ingenuity and the opportunity kind of came together here and um gas island yes. I, i'm just glad that they I, I really am so encouraged that there are places on earth w- just with zero rules yeah and i want more i want more islands like that more fight i, I want more law with this it's where which like, leads uh, me to believe Fight Island is where like all major disputes should be, uh, um, yeah, um, worked out, right? Like right wing, left wing people arguing. Go to Fight Island. Winner Duels. is whoever emerges, and then you know politicians getting into it. Fight, send them to Fight Island. If they can't work together, they go to Fight Island. They work it out there. I think that's the way we have to do it. You and I get into it. We go to Fight Island. You're either going to work together or you're going to fight together. But we don't fight. We realize as soon as we get there, we made a mistake. We we are not physically equipped to – well, you would probably win that fight. So I leave (laughs) Fight Island early. Once I see you in person again and remember you're six foot four, three, two. Two. How How tall are you? Six four, six ten. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll stick with 6'4". We'll Anyone stick with over six, six foot looks like 6'10 to me. So <laughs> the, the intimidation would be instant. Uh, here's, here's what I wanted to, to get into before we kind of specifically go through the NFL things. Because every, it's like every day I think football's going to happen, and then the next day I think it's not going to happen. And it's just based on whatever news is coming out, right? I think – it. If we see basketball, baseball, and hockey actually happen, then the NFL will do it. Like, they're not going to let those other leagues figure out a way to make money and them them get screwed. Even though the NFL is the most complicated sport to figure out because it's it, it, it just has the most, the most people, the most players, the most coaches. It is the most difficult to, to figure out. But it also has the most money and resources probably to work with. Um, so how optimistic, I guess, are you about those other sports happening successfully? And by successfully, I mean, just a a game, a a, multiple games being played. Okay. Yeah. No, multiple games. I think that is a good measure of success at this point. Um, with baseball, I don't have any sort of, um, trepidation as far as like being able to pull off the logistics of it. it is. I think what everybody's worried about right now is the players union versus the owners. And I'm, it feels like there's a, a proposal in place that's on the verge of approval every other day. And then either the players or the owners have some sort of issue, usually the players. Um, and we can get into like you know, who you want to blame in that kind of uh, back and forth there. But that's really that's really the biggest obstacle for them. I think for baseball, obviously, Korean baseball has shown that you know it's possible to to do this and to pull it off. And it looks weird without fans, but um, it's a lot less weird than than no baseball at all during the summer. So I think logistically, it's probably the easiest of the three to pull off, just because uh, baseball is not particularly a contact sport, and you can you can distance a little bit. It is a. Uh, it is already. Uh pretty much socially distanced yeah (laughs) except for when a batter is in in the box and uh a guy is on base depending on his yes maybe they make mandatory leadoff yeah you have to be six feet off the base at all times no i think i think you might be honest thing there Uh, a lot of runners gonna get picked off because of that (laughs) um or a lot of bases are going to get stolen. I'm not sure which, but it's going to absolutely ruin the game of baseball. Uh, but, I, you know, I'd love to see it. I think everybody does. Basketball is going to be a little more tricky now because um, you got guys like Trevor Ariza on the Trailblazers already said that uh, he's going to opt out 
of the tournament uh, when that happens because he's got some sort of uh, child custody thing with his kid and he can't leave him for a month or however long he's going to be there. Um, Avery Bradley said kind of a similar thing that his one of his kids is at risk um, and he doesn't want to be away from him for a month. So the NBA is allowing players basically to say, um, well, you know, I, I just can't do this and I'm going to stay home without any penalty other than I don't know if they get paid or not. But at the same time, that's like that's also really um, shaking up the, the hierarchy of teams here because Avery Bradley, the, you know, fifth or sixth um, player on the Lakers in, in terms of minutes per game. So it, it's really like it's not only, you know, threatening uh, whether or not these games are going to be played, but if they are played, uh, it's going to look a lot different in regular season just because certain players aren't going to be there. It's just like every team is probably going to um, enter this tournament without a key player. Right. And maybe, you know, maybe the one that like the one team that comes in intact and stays intact has a distinct advantage over the others. Like and the Nuggets kind of get, like, with, with Jokic like the, like the already getting it. Like he should be good. It's for the, the smartest duration. thing you could do. It's get the smartest it thing you can do is to get it right now. Because, and then, yeah. you know, but yield to have the same thing happen to him. Although uh, people who know how old he is um, realize how at risk he might be uh, yeah. a little, little NBA joke for you guys. <laughs> um, but well, you that's... might as well do it two weeks before or, you know, now because it's not happening until the end of July. Yeah. And I mean, like, that's the, there's so many things to, to factor in, uh, but it is athletes worried about their families and bringing, you know, stuff home to their family. And there's probably a lot of people out there like, hey, you're getting paid millions of dollars. Just go isolate away from your family for three, six months or whatever. That's a small price to pay for my entertainment. Um, but like, uh, it's a valid concern, and I think we'll get into that a little bit more when we talk about this this NFL stuff. Um, but I guess, like, as things are, the, the sports are supposed to start to resume through July, and so I think the NFL will get a look at how some of the other leagues do and handle these things, and what challenges they face, and maybe that will, I don't know, help what they do. But okay, so the NFL already moves already cancels the Hall of Fame game, which seems yes. like the most manageable football game to do because the smallest, smaller crowd. Uh, although I guess they sold like 20,000 tickets almost like instantly after uh, making ticket sales available. So maybe there you would be so many a, old, old Hall, Hall of Famers. Yeah. You don't want to get the Hall of Famers sick. That's, that's a, too old. That's a good point. No, that would be – Greatest irony. Yeah, the Hall of Fame game uh, said a racial slur back in 1993, and it's been canceled. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, then, uh, so the, the ceremony's been postponed indefinitely. That makes sense. That's an easy thing to just do later. Um, and then, But here's where it starts to get weird, because, okay, so Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, both – reporting that NFL teams adamant they're going to start training camp July 28th. So they're going to start training camp earlier than the Hall of Fame game. So they can't figure out the Hall of Fame game, but they've got training camp figured out. Okay. NF Adam Schefter talks to an NFL source, and this is exactly what he said. The NFL is going to play, Adam. I'm very certain of it. I have, or have faith in the league. The process and the testing and protocols are exceptional. It sounds like Trump is his inside, inside source. You should see and hear how much is being done. Daily saliva tests and PCR. Uh, polyamorous, chain, polyamorous reaction. chain reaction. Every three days, yeah, sanitizing everything, including the balls. You can't believe all that's being done and prepared. Can't believe how clean our balls are here. Yeah. At the NFL, we've got the cleanest balls. Uh, I don't like, uh, yeah, sanitize the footballs. Dude, you're going to be able to see your own tiny uh, reflection in these balls, Adam. 
Let me tell you. <laughs> you, if you can't see the corona in the, for the reflection, you can't get it. That is the NFL's exactly. official stance. Um, yeah, for some pristine balls on Sunday. Right. So that was yesterday. It's like, okay, NFL is going to do it. And then today, uh, Malcolm Jenkins went on CNN and was like, I would not be comfortable playing. Um, Jenkins does have a lot of gray hairs in his beard, makes him a little more at risk. But he's talking, again, to bring this back around, like he doesn't – he's got family at home, his parents. So knowing that, they are probably actually more at risk, like all of our parents, you know, could be. And – he doesn't want to bring something home to his family. And that's probably what keeps getting lost in when we're thinking about sports. It's like, all these athletes are healthy. Yeah, that, that is true. But there's so many more people involved, and they still clearly don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, I don't know if you pay attention to what is happening with coronavirus, but it seems like most there's still just so much uncertainty. So if... If players are uncertain and not comfortable, like, do you just go on and say to NFL players, like, if you don't feel comfortable, don't worry about it. We'll just start looking to the XFL pool to bring in, you know, extra players. They're talking about making uh, practice squads bigger from 10 to 16 players, which makes sense. Might be good to get more guys, you know, paid, but it's, I would be curious to see how many NFL players actually wouldn't come back and play because then on the opposite spectrum, you have Tom Brady ignoring the NFL PA saying, we don't want you guys doing uh, personal workouts. And now he is getting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers workouts to be bigger and bigger every day with Evan, uh, uh, Mike Evans joining today and you know, they're holding workouts there. So it seems like if you want to compete, you got to ignore that advice and start working out now. Or you got to think about your family that you don't want to, you know, make or get sick. And, you know, Tom Brady's got the TV 12 method, so he's not worried about his family because they're immune, which. Yeah, well, if you buy, figured you know, it out already, if you go on his website and um, look into his immunity supplements, uh, then you'll realize that not only is it safe to hold player on player workouts, um, it's safe to pack a stadium as long as they all come with their own uh, TB12 uh, immune system supplement. Yeah. Tom is, he has demanded that not only do uh, fans get temperature tech checked, they have to show that they have uh, subscribed to the, the TB12 website and that they have purchased a year long subscription. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this is just going to build and build until he has his own like TB12 health insurance, isn't it? <laughs> That's uh, it's, that's where this is going, I feel like. Yeah. Um, it's like a then, it's you have to be in yeah. such peak physical condition that it is very hard to get into and you're so healthy you don't really need it, but it's the most expensive plan you yeah, can it's, ever fathom. It's TB $12,000 a month. <laughs> yeah. That's the premium. <laughs> so, I mean, like it's weird because obviously our living and in income is attached to football happening. Right. So I'm following this as closely as I, I can while trying to keep my sanity. Uh, but if you were a betting man, what do you, what would you bet on football? And I have a, an idea, but what would you bet on football happening or football not happening or football happening, but it's, very weird and strange and has a lot of hiccups and the NFL regrets trying to even force a season. I don't think, um, I don't think there's any scenario in which they regret trying. I don't think anybody's going to hold it against them for trying just because, um, I mean, you run the risk of this kind of stuff just in everyday life. And you see that as things are opening back up, people are accepting a lot more risk. And to say that, um, you know, we're opening restaurants and, and more and more places gradually but the nfl can't give it a go um all the way you know almost three months from now uh i, I think that's kind of um hypocritical as everything else starts to open up to say all right well you know we can't this and this and this but um yeah the nfl i don't think so uh so i think i think something's gonna happen and i think they're gonna give it a really good shot and i'm not saying that 
hiccups won't happen because there's probably going to be something along the way. Uh, but I, I believe in the NFL's competence more than I believe uh, in our government's uh, <laughs> competence in handling this. Sure. I mean, the NFL's got its own like, investigative legal justice yeah. department. <laughs> And, you know, anyone who's dealt with people in the government know that the private sector is infinitely more, um, they're infinitely better at their job. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. More stations, I think, you know. like, when I listened to the, the Malcolm Jenkins uh, thing, like, the first thing I thought is, like, how, how could any NFL player be more worried about COVID than the normal risks of being on a football field? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Family, other people. He's thinking of other people, right? So it's like yeah, getting hurt playing football, seriously hurt, seems like obviously a far greater risk than anybody getting deathly ill from, from COVID. Uh, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't have the same thoughts, uh, be, but it, it comes from a place of um, like luxury to say that um, – if I don't want to work then I don't have to, because, you know, if you ask someone who's uh, working at a grocery store or somewhere where they, you know, have to physically be in a working space with, with people coming in and out yeah, and they have to do that to support their family. Um, you know, it's not a question of whether or not they want to, they, they kind of just have to and have to accept that risk. So I don't, I don't feel bad for these players at all. Um, you know, saying, you know, I'm not comfortable with doing this. It's their choice uh, at the end of the day, but um, you know I'm not I'm not losing or I'm not going to shed any tears for these players who can cry for them. Will take, I, I'm just asking that you cry for them. <laughs> I just want a, a, a quick little a, a one one single tear to run down my cheek. Right. Now, I mean to say that uh, I'm comfortable or I'm able to take a year off of work uh, in the interest of. Um, extreme safety at that point you know quarantining through uh an nfl season we don't know what the world's gonna look like in two months but uh that would be you know an extreme measure i think uh which they have the right to um but a lot of people won't be able to afford that um so like like i said they can do it but um you know it comes from a place of luxury and, and most people uh probably can't relate yeah, no, I, I think, think that's the average... what's turning people against uh, the players' union too, and um, it's really souring the relationship between fans and all three of these leagues right now. It feels like hockey hasn't really had any hiccups, but no, nah, hockey fans are loyal. Hockey fans are just the uh, hockey players are probably <laughs> the toughest. They're a different. They're a whole. They're just on a different level. Yeah, it's probably the most pure sport out there in terms of. Is. Guys do it because they, they also really have those face guards, you know. They, they have do have face guards. guards. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, th- and that's the other thing that's crazy is like you can't even get regular people to agree on wearing face masks in public. Like that, one of the e- simplest things you can do to help your safety and other people's safety. You can't get normal people to agree on that. Uh, so it's like. That seems like an easy thing to figure out. So figuring out sports, far more complicated. It's what, like, when I, when I start to fear that it won't happen, I'm like, we can't even do the basic shit right. But you're, you're, you're right. Leagues might be more organized than, you know, uh, the, definitely more organized than, and than the government and more willing to actually get something done than, you know, normal people. Uh, an idea... <laughs> Right. Go ahead. I was going to say, an idea I had today on the toilet was that the NFL could basically cut the season in half in terms of the amount of games played, where NFL teams play every other week. So you're getting like this two week span between all of your games so that. If your team does have an outbreak, you have a chance to quarantine people for close to as long as they need to be quarantined and maybe not, you know, miss miss any games uh, because you're going to have to have a a COVID personnel package. Every team's going to have to have a COVID package 
uh, COVID I, like goal, I like the goal line package. Now, yeah, and I, I don't think the NFL, right, I don't think the NFL would do that. But to me, that seems like an option that really hasn't been discussed. Um, I don't know. It's just a, just a toilet idea. I don't know if it's great, but ideas have. I think, I, no, I think it makes a lot of sense. The only thing I don't like about it is um, you tell me, uh, that Andy Reid is the coach on a bye every single game. Oh, Chiefs are going 16-0. 8-0. Or 8-0, whichever it is, yeah. So, I don't know if I like the sound of that, to be <laughs> honest. Just for that reason only. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I don't fucking know. It's, it's a thought. I mean, it, you'd be cutting it close because, the, the, you know, the quarantine time span is two weeks. <clears throat> so, yeah, if, if you test guys, like, as, as they're leaving the field, then um, – I don't know how long it takes to even show up in your body, but um, it, yeah, it'd, be, it'd be close. It'd yeah, be I close. mean, you could go every third week and just start the season, cancel the preseason altogether, start the season mid-August, so then you'll get an extra couple weeks in to, to, to space it out. But if a third of the teams were playing every weekend, huh, that's like, what, like 10 teams? So you get, you'd still get like – four or five games every weekend. Uh, what if you had like some of the teams go every – you space out the weeks. So I don't, I can't do the math on this. I can't possibly do the math on this. But someone who's good at math maybe can figure it out. Some of the teams go every two weeks and you just kind of stagger it. So there's games every week or every two weeks, but they get like three weeks. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, it would be – you'd have games played every week and it would be staggered for – Okay. That was your original idea? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But it's like, yeah, so week one, half of the teams start. Right. Week two, the second half of the teams start, and then you're basically kind of figuring out. It would be a nightmare to figure out how to rotate through all that if you're a schedule maker. Um, but I don't know. Somebody gets paid to yeah, figure some that kind shit of out. algorithm that can do it. Yeah, there's yeah, they just put it in a computer program and Jonah Hill figures sure. it out in five minutes. That's how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your face froze. I yeah, can I still mean, hear you, and, though. and Jonah is uh, no longer in the Batman movie. Okay. Well, I was going to oh, say was Jonah's no longer in the Batman movie uh, as the Penguin. So we oh, got he time. backed out, huh? I think he's supposed to be the Penguin. Either he backed out or they backed out, but then they paused the movie. He would have uh, been a good penguin, don't you think? Yeah, this is the Robert Pattinson Batman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, physically he cuts the the penguin figure. Yeah, he'd be a good penguin. Who else would be a good penguin? I, you could just run Danny DeVito back. Yeah, that would actually be great. As an older tank one, why not? Honestly. DeVito's uh, still got it. Peter I mean, he's – yeah, that would be the best move. Yeah. Michael Keaton's DeVito, considering yeah, I, I playing mean, I Batman think again. Dinklage, maybe. Oh, Dinklage would be good. I think he is, yeah. Is Dinklage too small to be a penguin? I feel like it's kind of up to, you know, it's up to uh, – to them, how how big they want the penguin to be. So you could technically have the Rock play the penguin as long as he's like hunched over and <laughs> and everything <laughs> has a like a crook nose. The the Rock would bring in the uh, the ratings for sure. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you get De Niro to play the penguin. Oh no, he's already in the Batman universe as as Murray Franklin, although he is uh, a deceased member of the Batman universe. So. Uh, all the rock does is shit gold so he does uh do we have any other football to talk about i uh, probably we're gonna do a patreon uh thing coming up yeah here. we're doing the espn redraft but our redraft of their redraft because it was, ESPN. their redraft was stupid it was absolutely stupid there were some yeah. bad decisions we're, there but we're also using it as a template so <laughs> yeah that's this what you get when you subscribe to Patreon. That's value you on hey, top of value. You 
could spend five dollars subscribing to ESPN Plus, uh, where you get stupid shit like that. Or you could spend five dollars subscribing to the Patreon, where you get slightly less stupid shit. Yeah, well, your choice. You know, vote with your wallet is all I'm saying. We uh, we have ESPN Plus, and we tried to watch what? the first episode of Peyton's Places, and it was yeah. uh, it was the one with Jay Leno, and it was with all of his cars. Yeah. yeah, it was bad. It was not good. Yeah, I've seen a couple. I think it's, there are uh, probably some good episodes in there, and it's probably better when he's talking to to other players. But uh, my wife was like, "This is, I don't like this." <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really blame her. Um, ESPN is not really known for. Uh, they were you had Kenny Main there for a second. And then they tried to like stretch that out into like a, a full series and it became garbage. Uh, but y- y- they haven't been, it hasn't been a, a network known for their comedy for, for quite some time. Nope. Mm-hmm. That's why they haven't given us the call. No, that's the only reason. Hey, once they decide to be funny again, uh, pick up the phone. Uh, Mr. I forget what his name is. Not the no. guy with the drug problem. Yeah, it's not Bob Iger anymore. It's not Bob Iger. It's Walt Disney himself. Yeah, it's just Disney's frozen head running. <laughs> it's the severed head of Walt Disney. And he literally can't pick up the phone. Because Walt, I mean, Walt Disney was an anti-Semite. He'd be fucking canceled in a second these days. I'm surprised he hasn't been can- I'm surprised they haven't had to change the name yet. Yeah. That feels like something where they're going to have to change the name. Especially with like you know you you look back at some of their their older cartoons. Oh god! Yeah, those. I think those are gonna hold up. Oh. If yeah, okay, yeah. If if Disney ends up getting canceled, I mean, Disney will never get canceled. Let's let's be clear. No, it's they too have big. More money than anybody. They're like um, petitions to change the name, which even then I think they have too much money to even like entertain that idea. Because uh, you know the Washington Redskins aren't even haven't even said anything about changing. Yeah, they don't name. give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> but if that becomes a thing, just know that you heard it here first, and the the idea probably originated here, here. first. Yeah, we canceled so, uh, Disney. I want some of that. I want some of that Disney cancellation money. I want Disney to pay us a lot of money to shut us to shut up our cancellation talk. Ooh. Now, Knowing Disney, you. either we'll settle or they'll just kill us. Yeah. It's one of the two. So personally, you know, given, um, you know, depending on how much money they're willing to pay, I'll take that risk. I'll take that risk. Death yeah. or money. I mean, Good bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mouse himself holding a gun to our head. We it's, kind kinda, of a, it's kind of a metaphor for uh, the entertainment industry as it is right now. Yeah, that's really funny. And if football doesn't happen, we'll be searching through old Disney cartoons where uh, they featured sports in the cartoon. And then we'll review that. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I'm, you know, I'm already starting to like kind of lose it without sports now. Oh, it's, yeah. You, you texted that me that and I, I ignored that text. Because you saw it yourself too and you didn't want to yeah. face the cold reality of that Could not. but I think I hit I'm close to my breaking point but I'm also not going to watch sports I was watching previously like I'm not going to watch NASCAR I'm not going to watch golf yeah. uh, I'm not going to watch maybe I'll watch a little Korean baseball who knows if um, basketball comes back we'll definitely cover some so of that we will become channel. a serious basketball uh, channel yeah, videos, podcasts, everything. We'll start having NBA personalities on the show. Um, I got to bank yeah, that money that. for my daughter, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Your daughter's yeah. existence will be funded by the National Basketball Association. NBA Perna daughter. All right. That We're just physically, you have to. <laughs> That doesn't mean you have to name your daughter after an, a current NBA player, legally. So uh, start thinking. 
Nicola Jokic. Nicola. Nicola would I think work. Nicola works. Or just Nicole. Yeah, which player would I name her after? Let's say a nugget. Rajon Rondo. R- Rondo. Rajonda. Rajonda Rondo. Rajonda Rondo. Yeah. And I'll say it just, yeah. it's one first name. Mm hmm. Well, glad we could figure that out. Big. Mm. Ooh, <laughs> Dikembe, Matumbo, <laughs> Turna. Mm-hmm. She's got the longest fingers in the entire family. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening to the podcast. You've made it. Bye. Made it. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop recording.